All right, so we're back here on the unit. Uh, here's the uh, left side of the unit here. We got the expansion valve and our solenoid coil and our solenoid valve body. So you can take this coil off of here by removing the top screw. We'll pull it out. You look at the coil itself, it'll tell you the voltage. Okay. If you got a burnt coil, that's easily replaceable. If you're soldering one of these in, look for the uh, information on the side right here. If you can see it, it says in. So that's your inlet. You don't want it, you don't want to reverse that. You don't want to reverse this. It'll make you'll have a problem. Uh, when you're going to solder this in place, the best thing to do is just take this thing apart. Okay, so take your nut off of there and you know pull your stem out of here and all your guts, just don't lose it all. Okay, there's a gasket that you could potentially melt if you were to um, solder it with this thing still in it. Okay, and then you could take this little piece out of here, take, basically taking all the guts out. And once you do that, solder it up in place, let it cool, and then put it back together. And once you put it back together, one of the things you need to leak check beside your joints is going to be whether or not you tighten this properly and make sure it's not leaking. Make sure your seal's in there properly. Okay. Let your solenoid, liquid line solenoid valve. And if you don't already know this, um, the purpose of it is to stop refrigerant flow. Once you do that, uh, it actually pumps the system down. <clears throat> okay. Two more things left on this thing. Here's your thermostat. This thermostat can be turned and moved to the setting you want. So let's just say we want to set it at negative 10. There's negative 10. If you notice this other little arrow next to it here, that's the temperature at which it's going to come back on at. It's going to cycle back on at. Generally, there's about a 6 degree differential, so if it cuts off at negative 10, uh, it will cycle back on somewhere around negative 4. These two arrows, you can change your differential by putting a flathead screwdriver right there and turning that. That's going to widen these arrows apart mainly this arrow here, your differential, but it's going to open it up and give you either a larger differential or a smaller differential. Okay. Other thermostats have a little slide on the side of it with the words minimum and so forth, and that's your differential setting there. So minimum is going to give you somewhere around you know, a 65 degree, 6 degree differential. So two wires, single switch in there, so either open or closed. Okay. All right. One more thing to look at I want to show you is the fan motor. So let's go around this unit right quick and see what we have here. Give you a few more tips and then we'll wrap it up. So I took the grill off. Here's your grill. Here's the one I took off. Here's your fan motor. So you take your Allen wrench, unscrew it there, loosen it up, and then pull your fan blade out. Okay? When you're Replacing these fan blades, you want to well. First off, you want to check to see if make sure they don't have any hairline cracks. If you have any hairline cracks, then this thing's probably going to break on you at some point. Best to replace it. Anyway, when you go to install a new one, the best thing to do is, you know, make sure that it's lined up on your motor properly. And I always try to like, I usually try to get my blades kind of somewhat the middle of our blade, somewhat between the middle of our frame here. So the middle of the blade here with the middle of a frame that kind of makes sure that it's kind of an even you know halfway in halfway out type of thing okay but if you can't do that because the shaft is too low then try to get it as close as you can okay you know let's take the blade off so here's the blade here's your motor real basic motor um, checking your motor you just want to make sure it's it's not loose not too much play in there if it's too much play then it's probably a bad motor or going bad Okay. Sometimes they have a capacitor on them, sometimes they don't. Um, here's the inside of your coil. Okay. A lot of these fan motors have with the uh, little quick connect, as you can see right there. They just unplug and then they plug back in. Those do come apart. So if you got a fan motor not working, um, check that first. I don't know if you can see from here, but also see that wire back here? It's got a nick in the wire. So that wire has got to be fixed. I can see the um, the copper in that wire. So if any water touches it along with the metal, you're going to 
conduct electricity is going to short out the unit. Trip the breaker or something, so that's got to be repaired. Anyhow, I hope this video has been of use, and um, I'll try to make some more videos in the future. I'm sorry that this video took a little longer than I wanted to. I'm, I'm trying to keep the videos as short as possible, um, so that's why you might see several videos. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Leave some comments if you like the video, and um, FYI, we're working on a website um, with actual service technician uh, field information, that things that they've experienced in the field. So once that's up and going, um, we'll get that posted for you as well. All right, talk to you guys later.